Hello Modern here, today I will be showing you my Spellweaver build guide in the last epoch, which utilizes the Enigma Unique and a ton of intelligence to outsmart your enemies with the most gruesome puzzle possible, death by math. And math can solve all kinds of problems, be it high corruption, arena, dungeons or your taxes. I will give you an overview of the build, go over mechanics, passive, skills, the loot filter and optimization at the end. A quick disclaimer for those of you pushing higher corruptions, this build was tested at 150 to 200 corruption and cleared everything comfortably. 300 is achievable, 400 will probably not be something this build can do. This build centers around the Enigma Unique that enables you to scale the spark spell ailment by stacking as much intelligence as possible. We can further add the calculated destruction passive to the mix to overload this stat with benefits. It gives us 4% ward retention, 4% increased damage, 2 spell damage and 3% increased crit chance per point. This makes it the best stat to get on gear no matter what. But Enigma also comes with other benefits that are useful to us, like increased AoE allowing spark detonations to overlap and clear whole packs in one cast, as well as a strong more damage multiplier when we apply the ailment portion with a melee skill. This can be achieved through rigorous application of the mana strike formula, but going into melee range is dangerous for our intelligence stacking boy. The best way to circumvent this is by teleporting the formulas directly into the brains of our enemies, overloading their peanuts through the help of teleporting strikes. Star Guide further improves the skill with an auto target feature which is a pure preference choice and can be dropped in favor of more area of effect. All other skills are here to buff us and function as support equations. Teleport provides us with permanent stun immunity as well as additional armor and a way to proc lightning nova for spark charges. Enchant weapon gives us a near permanent 50% increase to our attack speed with enough CDR as well as an ailment cleans and a way to apply additional armor shred as well as shock. I will talk about the CDR breakpoints in the gear section. Next is firebrand which buffs us with some serious damage increases. Brand of Arcanus, Arcane Sharpshooter and Wildfire provide us with 90% crit multi as well as 30 flat spell damage which is an insane amount of free stats. Ever Flames is needed for quality of life purposes, Insolation provides us with additional 180 armor and we also get 24 ward generation with mana strike. This skill is filled with benefits for this build and can be easily kept up all the time, but you don't have to during regular mapping. It's only really needed when fighting tougher differential equations of higher orders. And the last layer of buffs comes from flame ward, grab the additional charge and damage reduction for some much needed defenses. We can later use a despair glyph to get another charge up and running on this bad boy to improve our survivability in high corruptions substantially. Next are passives. Those are, as always, very straightforward and only required to pick up as much intelligence as possible. Calculated destruction is the most important note here because of the breakpoint bonus of increased spell crit chance per intelligence point. Rift bolt is also quite useful for additional penetration and the much needed lightning damage leech this life. Grab Prodigy and 3 points in Scholar last for some additional defenses. Next the loot filter. You can find a custom one in the description box down below. Just download and import it. It takes care of your whole progression but you can safely use a different one if you like. Skills are next. Since I already explained everything in the previous section I will omit explanations here. Take note of the numbers besides each node signifying what to grab first and last. Also make sure to sub, like and comment for some juicy content. Now a quick look at my gear so you know what my damage roughly translates to. You can find the optimized set with the example idols in the talent planner down below. Grab intelligence on all gear pieces that can roll it. This includes boots, gloves, the chest, helmet, rings and the relic. Use a scepter during leveling and switch to a rune dagger once it becomes available at 61. This one is crucial for this build because of the flat crit chance increase to all sources, including spells like spark. Crit multi and increased crit chance are the preferred prefixes with lightning damage as the sealed one. Armor shred as well as shock are also important to grab here. Next let's talk about the crit chance cap. This one is very important because of the high amount of crit multi available to us and each percent will increase your damage substantially. With a base crit chance of 9% with a rune dagger we will need 112% increased crit chance to achieve 100% crits. This is a lot of crit. Luckily we are getting a ton through intelligence and calculated destruction. This can only be achieved through near perfect gear. You can find it in the talent planner. Keep in mind you can omit crit multi in favor of more spell crit if the need arises. Coppering bases are also a great way to boost your crit. The next problem we need to solve is the cooldown equation for permanent enchant weapon uptime. For this we need 66% CDR, which can be achieved with the CDR helmet base, two opal rings, a T5 CDR belt and a T6 CDR boot mod. This is a lot of investment and generally not worth it. However, we can also have other spells we can lower the cooldown of, namely teleport and flame ward. Getting teleport to under 6 seconds allows for permanent stun immunity without having to worry about the cast time. This is achieved through 30 
35%. Flame Ward with 3 charges has a duration of 12 seconds. Getting the cooldown down to 12 would allow for a 4 charge chain. This is achieved with 40% CDR. An Open Ring at 10%, a T5 Boot Mod at 20% and a Sealed Belt Mod at 10% would achieve this while providing us with only 1.5 seconds of enchant weapon downtime. This is the sweet spot we want to aim for. You can also use 2 Open Rings for this. Crit immunity is achieved through the Mystic Plate with the Reign of Dragons Crit Avoidance Blessing. The Mystic Plate has to have at least 30% because the Blessing can only roll up to 70%. Speaking of Blessings, grab Flat Armor in Spirits of Fire, Physical Resistance in Game of Winter, Crit Multi or Increased Crit in the Black Sun and Lightning Shred in the Ending of Storm's Timeline. I did 31 runs before I gave up and settled for the increased Lightning Damage. So that's fine, RNG is a cruel mistress. And lastly Idols. Go for as much Crit and Health as possible and that's about it. Now this sums up my Spellweaver Spark build guide for Last Epoch. Got more lined up for Last Epoch, D4 and other isometric games, so if you want more juicy content, make sure to like, sub and comment. If you want to support me some more, make sure to check out my Patreon, Paypal and channel membership. See you next time and bye!